Okay, in this video what we'd like to talk about are voltages and diodes. So what we're going to do is make some measurements here using our meter. So it'll be a bit of practice for us here using our voltmeter here. And we're going to use a comparatively simple circuit here that's going to involve a diode. Now a diode is this device that we discussed in the very first video that we looked at our supply stock here. And it's a little black cylindrical device. It looks a lot like a resistor in size, but it's all black and has this gray band on it. And so how we're the circuit we're using here, you can see the red line here coming in from the positive supply of the battery. It's feeding directly a 100 ohm resistor, so a brown, black, brown resistor here. And at this junction point here, the resistor then feeds its current into this diode here. And if you're building this thing, be very careful how you have it oriented here. Make sure that you have the silver band on the diode facing this way towards the right or towards the more negative side of the circuit. And then uh, we go back around again to the the black end or the negative end of the battery right here. So what will happen, I'll just sort of plug the battery in, and there's nothing to indicate anything's happening here. Current is flowing here, but the resistors and the diode don't reveal anything. So let's just make a few voltage measurements to check a few things out here. So the first thing I'll do is I'll take my two probes here, and I'll measure the voltage across the entire circuit. And if I do that, I get about 8.3 volts, and that's the uh, voltage of the battery right now. Why wouldn't it be 8.3 volts? Because the battery is connected across the whole circuit. But now what I'll do, let's just measure the voltage across the resistor. And it's not 8.3, it's something like 7.3. Now if I go measure the voltage across the diode here, it's about 0 0.76, 0 0.8 or so. Now so if I add the 7.3 and the 0.7, or the 0.8 or so, then I do get the full voltage about the 8 point whatever that the whole battery presents across the circuit. So we see a bit of conservation in there that if we have sort of, let's just round the numbers down a bit, if we have 8 volts across the whole circuit here, the voltage has to be divided in a way that it adds always to 8 volts across all the elements in the circuit. So for instance, if the resistor is dropping about 7 volts, then the diode has to drop about 1 volt, you know, in round numbers, so to speak. So one thing that's sort of interesting here is just keep in mind that whenever I put the voltmeter across just the diode, I always get this number about 0.7 volts. And that's a very characteristic number of these diodes here. Okay, so just a couple things here, as long as we're just talking about voltage here. Let's take the diode out and reverse it. So I'm going to make the silver end point towards the other direction now, point towards the more positive part of the circuit here and put it back in. And notice what I'll get now is even though I still have about 8.7 volts across the whole circuit, I'm getting zero across the resistor now. And of course, the whole voltage across the diode now, about eight volts across the diode. What's happening here? Why is there zero volts across the resistor? And the reason is, of course, because the diode is in backwards now. Remember, the diode is a polar device and it has to be inserted in a particular direction in order for current to flow. And that direction is always so that this silver tab is towards the more negative side of the battery, but it's in backwards here, so no current's flowing in the circuit. And if there's no current flowing in the circuit, the resistor can't have any voltage across it because there's no current in it, there's my zero. But of course the battery is still holding the voltage of about 8.3, 8.6 volts across the diode, but there's just no current flow because the diode's in backwards. So there you go. Just remember the 0.7 about the diode, and we saw a case here where the diode was shutting down the current flow. So what I'll do now is I'm going to insert this red LED. You should have some of those in your supply kit here. And LED, of course, stands for light emitting diode. So these LEDs are diodes, just like this one is here, but they emit light. This one does not emit light. Okay. So here's the light emitting diode. Let's do a few voltage checks with it now. So of course I have the full battery voltage, about the 8.1 volts across the whole circuit. Across the resistor now I have about 5.6 volts. So that's changed quite a bit. And across the red LED I have about two and a half volts. So that's something that's also sort of common here. Maybe we'll just write a few numbers down here. So across the state straight diode here, we always had 0.7 volts. And when we had the red LED here, what are we getting? About 2.4 volts. These are fairly common here. And we'll sort of wrap up and discuss these when we close the video out. Uh, just a couple things here. Let's go ahead and put the, the LED Out. Let's just take the circuit out just a minute. I couldn't find my diode. Sorry about that. And let's just put the diode in, in the proper orientation. So now I have the 100 ohm resistor feeding the LED, feeding the diode so that the silver band is over here towards the rightmost portion of the circuit. And of course the LED lights. If I take the diode out and reverse it, we said no current flows. And now the LED is a nice visual indicator of that. No current flows. See that the current, the circuit is completely connected 
but the diode is inserted in the wrong direction, current cannot pass through the circuit, and so the resistor will have no current through the LED, same thing, so it doesn't light. Okay, let's go ahead and put it back, the diode back in, so that the LED lights up again. So there's the big series circuit. Let's make some measurements here. Of course, across the whole circuit, I've got, you know, about the eight volts there, the battery's voltage here. Across just the resistor, I have about five volts. That's different than before. Across the LED, I still have about the 2.4 volts here. And across the diode, I still get the 0.7 again. So it's sort of a common characteristic there, even when you combine these things with a, another resistor, another circuit element here. Looks like the red LED is holding up at 2.5 volts and the diode at 0.7 volts. Let's take the red LED out and put in a different one here. I forgot what color this is here. Let's just see what it's going to come up. Green. Okay. Let's check the voltages now. Still 8 volts across the whole circuit. That's the battery doing its job. 4.7 volts across the resistor. See, it's different. And the green LED, about 2.6 volts. So for this green LED here, we have about 2.6 volts. And guess what the voltage is going to be across the diode there? Let's see if we can get the leads in there. Ooh, I'm not touching these things right. Here we go, here and here. 0.7 across the diode once again. So the diode's holding up at 0.7 green LED 2.6. Let's look at our last LED here, and we're about to wrap this video up here. This is the blue LED. I don't know if it looks blue on the camera. It certainly looks blue to me. And if we look across the whole circuit, same thing again. There's the battery supply, 8.2 volts about. Across just the resistor, 3.3, an entirely different number again. The blue LED, 4.1 volts. Look at that, 4.1 volts across the blue LED. And guess what the numbers can be across the diode? You know, these voltages are all shifting around. Voltages across the diode, 0.7 again. So that's sort of what our goal was of the video here, is to show you, uh, make some practice measurements with the voltmeter here. And we saw some interesting characteristics here. The red LED, just by physically how these things operate, will always have, when they're fully on, about a 2.4 volt drop across them for red. Green will be a bit higher at 2.6, and the blue one, which you have here in the circuit here, that last one here, will sort of always have a voltage of 4.1 volts across it. And probably the most interesting thing are these diodes here, which whenever they're fully on, always seem to have a voltage of 0.7 volts across them. So there's sort of these devices that by their construction, their very design construction, how they operate, have very specific voltages that they'll be run at when they're fully turned on and operating properly here. And you can see that the resistor was quite different. The resistor's voltage changed with every element I put in here, almost a variable here, because the resistor doesn't have such properties. The, the voltage drop across the resistor uh, is given by Ohm's law, which is covered in this video sequence here. So the resistor doesn't really have a set voltage, it just depends on how much current is running through it. But of course, the current that we saw flowing through the circuit depended on the other elements that we had inserted in there. So the takeaway from this video here is remember that the black non-light emitting diodes usually always have a forward voltage drop of 0.7 volts. That's a characteristic quantity of these diodes. Something you should probably remember that whenever you insert one in a circuit or use one or see one, you can always expect a voltage drop of 0.7 volts across them. Sometimes they're used even for tuning voltages to exact numbers by having these 0.7 predictable drops across them. And these LEDs have their voltage drop uh, because of the way they're engineered to produce the color that they do. They'll have very characteristic voltage drops as well. So if you have different colored LEDs, maybe outside of red, green, and blue, maybe you have some yellows and orange, you should definitely test those too. They'll have different numbers. The diode will always be at 0.7.